morning. I'll continue the discussion on casket analysis. The contents of the lecture are the casket nomenclature and terminology. Here I'll discuss both compressure and turbine caskets. Then I'll review the expression for lift and rack coefficients or discuss on compressure casket performance test results and then casket losses. I'll explain now about casket nomenclature and terminology. I'll go slow here to make you understand an aerofoil is built around a basic camber line. Thus, it is the skeleton of the aerofoil. Thus, the camber line could be a circular arc or a parabolic arc. And theta is called the camber angle, which is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2. I'll explain what is theta 1 and theta 2. And a thickness T is distributed over the camber line along with the leading edge and trailing edge circle that finally forms an aerofoil. What I have told here, I have explained to this schematic where I have developed an aerofoil. To initiate the work, I have first taken a line which is called the cord line. Cord line is the baseline on which the aerofoil will be created. After the cord line, I have taken the camber line which could be a circular or a parabolic arc and dotted line here is the camber line. Now you can appreciate theta 1 and theta 2 at the leading and trailing edge. Look here, I have further explained with this figure what is theta 1 and theta 2. This is my chord line and this is the camber line at the leading edge, center of the leading edge circle, where the cord line and camber line intersect. If you draw a tangent to the arc, that is to the camber line, the angle made by the tangent and the cord line is theta 1. Similarly, at the tailing edge, you would get theta 2. And if you draw a perpendicular to the tangent at the leading edge center, and similarly, a perpendicular at the trailing edge center, then theta is the angle holds by these two perpendicular. So thus, theta would be theta 1 plus theta 2. So after we'll get, after we'll created the camber line, we'll distribute the thickness T, thickness of the aerofoil around the camber line with the leading edge and trailing edge circle. Let's finally make the Aerofoil. Now, leading edge and trailing edge circle are the two small circles, and the cord is the distance between the leading edge circle center and the trailing edge circle center. That is why cord is the approximate length of the aerofoil. Similarly, what is A and what is B? You see, B is the maximum departure 
of the Campbell line from the cord line. And he is the location where that maximum departure occurred. And A is measured from the leading edge center. Thus, for a circular arc, theta 1 must be equal to theta 2 is equal to theta by 2. And A by C is equal to 0 0.5. Similarly, for a parabolic arc, A by C would be less than is equal to 0.5. After discussion on development of aerofoil, I'll now discuss about a cascade geometry. Now the specification of cascade geometry is the pitch cut ratio and stagger angle. Stagger angle is the setting of the blade. And what is pitch? Pitch is the spacing between two consecutive blades. Thus, I have indicated here S is the pitch and C is the chord. So pitch chord ratio is defined by the parameter S by C, while C by S is often referred as solidity. Now look, I have indicated both turbine and compressor caskets here. So I'll take first the compressor cascade. Now, if I consider the axial direction, okay? So the chord line here makes an angle lambda with the axial direction. And lambda is called the stagger angle. So the stagger angle and the orientation of the blade defines the cascade where pitch by pitch to cut ratio is an important parameter. Now, here lambda for the compressor cascade is considered as positive, while for the turbine cascade, you see I have indicated here lambda, However, the orientation of the blade will be completely opposite to the turbine cascade. If I draw the camber here, which I have drawn now by the blue line, and if you draw the camber for the compression blade, you will appreciate the, the difference between the turbine and the compression cascades, where lambda appears the same. Right. Now, to make that turbine blades and the compression blades um, uh, uh, orientation opposite, we often define as lambda as negative for a turbine blade, turbine caskets. Sorry. However, another way to define the stagger is to is by the quantity beta star. Beta star is the angle made by the court line with respect to tangential directions. Now, if we define stagger by beta star, then for compressor casket, beta star will be always less than 90 degree. And for a turbine casket, beta star will be greater than 90 degree. I have considered here few very important parameters like angle of incidence I, deviation del, and angle of attack alpha. To define that, I have considered arrow foil on the court line. Furthermore, I have considered here the Campbell line also, which has been indicated by the dotted line. Now C1 be the inlet velocity 
Let's see one mix an angle I with respect to the Campbell line. So I is called the angle of incidence. Furthermore, theoretically, C2 should leave along the Campbell line. Now in this case, C2 makes an angle del with the Campbell line, which is called deviation. So C2 is deviating from the Campbell line. So I have defined now the deviation del. Now, what is angle of attack? Angle of attack is the angle between the vectorial mean velocity cm and the chord line. So look, this is the chord line and this is the cm. So this angle is nothing but angle of attack and angle of attack is denoted here by alpha. Thus, alpha m can be given as alpha m is the vectorial mean angle can be given as lambda plus alpha. Lambda is the stagger and alpha is the angle of attack. Thus, here I have defined angle of incidence I, deviation del, and angle of attack alpha. These three are very important parameter in cascade nomenclature. I have considered a compression of cascades now. Here I'll explain relationship between different geometric angles, blood settings, and flow angles of a compressure cascade. Thus, I have given here a schematic of compressure cascades. Um, I have explained on this figure different angles and blood settings. So I'll go slow here. Look, this is the compression cascad I have told. And C is the chord and S is going to pitch, which I have indicated here. I have also shown the chord line. So I have illustrated lambda. Lambda is a stagger angle. I have superimposed here the Campbell line. Now I have defined in this figure theta 1 and theta 2. Look, theta 1 is the angle between the chord line and the Campbell line at leading edge and theta 2 is the angle between the Campbell line and the chord line at the trailing edge. So I have marked theta 1 and theta 2 here. Is not. Now, lambda plus theta 1, if you sum these two angles, will give you alpha 1 dash. Alpha 1 dash is the blade inlet angle. So this is alpha 1 dash. Similarly, you can get alpha 2 dash which is the blade exit angle I have indicated here. Alpha 1 is the flow angle. So now I is the incidence. Incidence is the angle between the Campbell line and the inlet flow. Thus, alpha 1 dash 
plus i is equal to alpha 1. What I like to say, alpha 1 dash blade angle plus angle of incidence is equal to the flow angle. Similarly, I have defined here deviation. Deviation is the angle between the camber line and the exit flow. And thus, I have defined alpha 2. Look, this is the alpha 2. So this is a picture, this is a schematic where you can appreciate the relationship of blood setting, different geometric angle along with the flow angles. To summarize, I have indicated here lambda, which is the stagger, which is the angle between the chord line and the axial directions, theta, theta 1 and theta 2, alpha 1 dash and alpha 2 dash, angle of incidence and also angle of deviation, del, and then alpha 1 and alpha 2, along with the chord, this is chord, you know and this is speech. What I have stated earlier, I have explained further where lambda be the stagger angle for a compressure cascades. So I continue the discussion on compressure cascades and here is the figure that I had presented earlier. With respect to lambda and theta, the camber angle, I can now define blade inlet angle alpha 1 dash and blade outlet angle alpha 2 dash. This blade inlet and outlet angle are the geometric parameter and alpha 1 dash can be given by lambda plus theta 1 while alpha 2 dash equal to lambda minus theta 2. So alpha 1 dash minus alpha 2 dash would be equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 equal to theta is a camber angle. Now you know for a circular arc profile theta 1 is equal to theta 2 is equal to theta by 2. Now, here inlet angle alpha 1 can be given by alpha 1 dash plus i and here outlet angle is equal to alpha 2 dash plus del where i is the incidence and del be the deviation. Now alpha 1 and alpha 2 dash these two are the flow angle. Now I'll define a very important quantity which is called deflection, right? Deflection is equal to alpha 1 minus alpha 2. It actually says the deflection of fluid as it passes through the casket. And thus the quantity deflection is related to the leaf generated on the blade. Thus deflection can be stated as alpha 1 dash plus i minus alpha 2 dash plus del. So deflection would be equal to alpha 1 dash minus alpha 2 dash plus i minus del. That can be stated as theta plus i minus del. So I have given an expression of deflection which can be related to the lead with respect to theta. Theta is the geometric parameter and i and del 
depends on the flow conditions, incidence and deviation of flow. Further, stagger can be related with the blade angle. Thus, for a circular arc camber line, here the stagger can be expressed as lambda equal to alpha 1 dash plus alpha 2 dash divided by 2. Cascade with parabolic arc profile, we can express lambda as lambda plus tan inverse 4b divided by 4a minus c is equal to alpha 1 dash and lambda minus tan inverse 4b divided by 4a minus c is equal to alpha 2 dash where a is the distance from the leading edge for maximum camber and B is the maximum displacement of camber line from the court line. A and B I had already defined. Let me discuss about the turbine casket now, where orientation of the blade is different than that of compressure. Here I have given a schematic and I have illustrated different angles with the blade setting. So this is the cord line, okay, and lambda is the angle that cord line makes with the axial direction. So lambda is the stagger, and I have indicated also the camber, this is the camber which have been shown by a dotted line and theta 1 is the angle that the camber makes with the cord line at the leading edge. Similarly theta 2 has also been shown at the trailing edge, which is the angle between the camber and the cord line at the trailing edge. And look, this is also lambda at the trailing edge. Okay. The incidence is the angle between C1 inlet velocity and the camber line. So one can evaluate alpha 1 for the turbine casket and similarly alpha 2 for the turbine caskets where del is the devi deviation which has been marked here. Here deviation is the angle between C2, this is the C2, C2 and Campbell line. So as I have shown you different angles related to compressor casket from this figure, one can establish the similar correlation for turbine caskets. And it is worthwhile to note that orientation for the turbine casket is different than the Compressure caskets. Here I have mentioned about arrow foil nomenclature in brief. There are two systems one is British practice, and while the other one is American practice. In British practice, arrow foil profile is termed as C series. While in American practice, it is termed as Naka series of aerofoil. 
As an example, in Bitti's practice, an annual fall is designated as 12 C4 stroke 35 P30. What does it mean? C4 stands for a particular class of aerofoil. 12 means 12% 12 thickness. P is the parabolic profile. Similarly, Naka 65 is a series of aerofoil in American practice. So that there are books of aerofoil. So like Naka 65, you can go to the particular page where the characteristics has been stated in tables. Thus, a wide range of aerofoils have been tested and they are tabulated and their characteristics have been tabulated. Now I have reviewed some results, particularly regarding lift and drag coefficient for incompressible flow we may define cl is the lift coefficient as l divided by half rho cm squared into c where cm is the vectorial mean velocity and c is the chord similarly cd is equal to d by half rho cm squared into c and zeta is equal to del p0 by half rho cm squared, where zeta is the stagnation pressure loss coefficient, and del p0 equal to p0 1 minus p0 2, which I have stated earlier as omega tilde. Now, CD can be expressed as, okay, S by C zeta into cos alpha m, we have proved earlier. And thus for a compression casket, I can say CL is equal to twice S by C tan alpha 1 minus tan alpha 2 into cos alpha m minus CD into tan alpha m. This also has been proved. Now, in nominal range of applications, CL, CD by CL ratio, this ratio, CD by CL ratio is small, much smaller than unity. And thus, we can approximate further stating that L by D is equal to CL by CD that is equal to 2 by zeta into tan alpha 1 minus tan alpha 2. Thus actually I have neglected this part for low value of CD over CL which occur in the nominal range of operation. Similarly for a turbine casket have proved that CL is equal to twice S by C tan alpha 2 minus tan alpha 1 cos alpha M plus CD into tan alpha m while cd by cl ratio is much smaller than unity i can neglect the contribution of cd into tan alpha m and i can express as cl by cd ratio is equal to twice 
divided by zeta into tan alpha 2 minus tan alpha 1. I'll explain here the compressure cascade performance. With respect to this, I must refer the work of Hall 1942. He measured the compressor cascade performance in a low speed wind tunnel and the test result I have presented here. He expresses the total pressure loss as zeta. Zeta is equal to del P0 by half rho C1 square. Further, he has measured deflection epsilon and also the angle of incidence I. He expresses the, his test result in terms of I, so x-axis is I, angle of incidence, and the y-axis, left-hand side, is the deflection, epsilon, and the right-hand side, he has expressed the total pressure loss coefficient. Now I have already explained the deviation is proportional to the lift generated on the blade because deviation decides turning of flow within the casket. Now as suppose as we increase the angle of incidence from minus 20 degree, then Note that pressure loss coefficient decreases whether well deflection increases. At some point when pressure loss becomes minimum and after that pressure loss tends to increase. Now look, even if we go beyond the minimum pressure loss, then also deflection tends to increase, but at a certain point it becomes maximum then tend to decrease. Where it becomes maximum, that's called the stall condition that is when it tends to decrease that means lift also tends to fall it indicates that blade had already stalled that is the separations from particularly from suction surface appeared the point where the deflection maximum that the stalling point is denoted by epsilon s. And look here, the losses is almost twice of the minimum loss. After that stall point, losses tends to increase significantly with, with decrease of lift or deflection. So I have defined the stall point. And another point I like to define here, which is called nominal condition epsilon star, which is defined as 0.8 of epsilon s. Suppose it is here. This is called nominal condition. At this condition, a cascade is designed so that we can get some reasonable operating range. Thus, I have expressed here the stall point is arbitrarily defined 
as the incidence i at which the total pressure loss coefficient would be twice of the minimum total pressure loss. Further, the deflection at the stall point is denoted as epsilon a, and the nominal condition is referred as 0.8 of epsilon a, at which a casket would be designed. Now I'd like to refer to you the casket losses. Now I'll initiate with secondary flow loss. Here I have shown a classical picture of secondary flow loss, particularly formation of horse vortices. Now the boundary layer, because of viscous flow, the boundary layer will develop not only on the casket surface, the blade surface, but also on the hub and casing. Now this boundary layer developing on the hub or the casing is referred as indoor boundary layer in case of casket flows. Now I have indicated here this indual boundary layer forming on the surface. Now turning of this incoming boundary layer within the blade passage would develop horseshoe vortices. This horseshoe vortices is a source of secondary flow loss. Thus, the losses can be classified as one is the profile loss. Profile loss is the source of formation of boundary layer on the blade surface. And this can be assayed from casket tails. So profile loss is designated at CDP. The second one is the annulus loss. The boundary layer will form on the annulus wall. And because of the formation of boundary layer on the annulus wall, there will be some loss. And this is designated at CDA. And CDA is well correlated with the relation as 0.2s divided by h, where s is the peak and h is the height of the blade. Thus, we can assess CDA, annulus loss. And the other one is the secondary flow loss. This is because of formation of secondary vortices, as I have explained earlier, within the blade passage because of end one boundary layer. And this secondary flow loss can be correlated as 0 0.018 into CL. So I can assess CDP, that is profile loss coefficient from cascade test, annulus loss coefficient, and secondary flow loss coefficient from some correlation. After that, I can assess the total loss coefficient as CD equal to CDP plus CDA plus CDS. Thank you for listening.